Welcome to the Church of Obelis. Today we're going to look at how to play Chen and Alchemist together. Now Chen is a very strong hero in this patch, Alchemist is a very strong hero in this patch, and together they're greater than the sum of their parts. We actually have Alchemist picked fourth, and then Chen is actually going to be our last pick. And so we're going to look at in this video is why are these heroes together valued so highly that they would want to last pick the two of them. If you want to become a better Chen player, you can join the fold by subscribing to this channel and clicking the little bell button. And now let's jump into the game. So when you're playing Alchemist, of course, securing rules is very important. So you can see Queen's Crew here with four heroes at the, at the top to be able to secure two runes. And they see that no one's contesting. So Mail is coming back to the middle lane to do some blocking. And they get their two runes. So the idea behind the Chen Alchemist lane is that Alchemist doesn't really want to fight in the early game, he just wants to farm. And Chen doesn't really offer offensive capabilities, which will be wasted with an Alchemist, but he offers a lot of sustain with this Divine Favor and the ability to be able to stack camp, camps with creeps. And um, in addition, he also has this headrest he picked up. It's basically the uh, Kuro build, just like a slightly less greedy version of the Kuro build, because he still bought Tangos and shared them out to his teammates and um, doing the usual support stuff. But then he picked up this headrest recipe in the courier from the uh, Bounty Gold. The courier that was sent out in the middle to um, get mail himself. Alchemist is particularly strong against these Magnus lanes because Magnus is a very strong hero in the mid game, but he just doesn't offer much in the laning phase. And this Magnus Rubik lane just offers almost no kill threats. And we see a little bit of an aggressive move here from this Magnus Rubik lane. We see a skewer here, some phase bolting, um, but doesn't really do very much. Alchemist gets a bit low, but he has a lot of region. And you can see the 4 minute mark is coming up again. He actually missed the stack on the 3 minute mark, but he's gonna try to double stack here. You get this stack, but unfortunately this stack, he attacked a little bit too late. So it's not gonna stack. But he's going to take over this Melt Golem, of course, a very strong creep in the early game. And he's also going to find this Happy Stormcrafter, which is also really, really strong in the early game. What you want to do here is you want to hit this camp once and then take over the Happy, so it takes less damage. Because if you take the Happy right away, this takes more hits from the camp. And you want this Happy to stay alive and be healthy. And now they can go really aggressive here, a lot of magic damage with these nukes. And they're going to get this kill here. Um, first kill in this, uh, this Chen Alchemist lane. That's of course excellent. Taking a little bit too many hits on here on this uh, Harpy, but uh, uh, gives away the aggro now. And they're just pushing back this Magnus, and they just can't do anything in this lane. And as you notice, if you look at the clock, the runes are coming up. And also positioned here at top to get to secure the runes. Um, this creep wave was pushed in, and this uh, PA sort of has to stay back. And this is going to be. Four runes for Quincy Crew. And here is the fourth one. So, of course, Alchemist is now very happy. And he's already here, top net worth. Even though they're playing against this uh, Timbersaw, of course, having a good lane, having good starts, but can't quite compete with all this farm that this Alchemist is getting. And you can see a little bit of carelessness, uh, not the most careful micro here. This Harpy, it's really important to keep this Harpy alive. And yes, it's out of mana, but you can just send it back to the base and um, refill it, and then send it back. But yeah, it gets killed, actually denied by Yava, good job on that, but uh, really the important thing is keeping this Harpy alive. And you might think the Harpy is only good in the early game, but actually it has full night vision, like a slug, 1800 night vision, so it's actually quite strong, especially in this first night, when the uh, nuke damage is still relevant, but the night vision of course also very relevant. And here SVG has his double golem army here, and they're gonna corner Nikwa. Stun, another stun, and that is a kill of an alchemist. I'm not sure if you really should be taking these uh, mud golems so aggressively, because these are also the best creeps to farm for alchemist, because you get three creeps for the price of one, but of course they're very strong at these early game fights. You can see Alchemist getting a bit aggressive here. 
Uh, this is not a good idea. And I can miss dies here. And Chen is also going to die. So you can see this is not the best start for an alchemist that you can imagine. Also, there's not actually that many stacks. This is like a, a double camp. This is like a double camp. There's no stacks here, no stacks here. This is not like the ideal start you want from an alchemist. But still, with Chen in his lane, the lane went well. But um, you really want to have more stacks than that. So Mail is quite low in his last rock, so he's getting recalled to the shrine. And then he can push out the bottom wave and still have a TP up to be able to respond in case of a fight. And you can see here, up here, Abaddon is pushing his lane lane very aggressively. He's an ally, he doesn't really die very easily. And um, he wants to create space for this alchemist, because that's what it's all about. If you play this alchemist lineup, you need to create space for your alchemist. The alchemist is going to need a couple of minutes to farm and then he's going to be online. But for that time, you just have to do this sort of aggressive plays, and even if you die with them, that's okay. See more space creating in the middle here. Lashrak already died here. Chen is also going to die. And War Respond is 5 to this, which means that Abaddon can keep pushing here. And Alchemist can keep farming. But now he actually has to move away because so many people died. The space creating is of course important, but you know that doesn't mean it, that it's a license to feed. It's still important to actually get something done with uh, the space creating moves that you do. And here we have a cat wave, so Quincy Guru is going to create some space by pushing this tower in. You see not the best micro here from SVG, but that's okay. And in this fight they're recalling the Shadow Demon because he's far away. Everyone is converging on this tower. Except for Alchemist, who is still farming. Close to his Radiance now. Fight breaks out here. And he's just a male here coming in with full mana. He has even Maroon. And this is a fight that War cannot win. Because they just haven't hit their timing yet. This uh, PA still has no particular items. And um, Chen, of course, is quite strong at this stage of the game. Timber of course, is strong. But there's just one hero that's really strong. This ogre, I mean, can't really do anything. It's a bloodlust boss. And now Quincy Crew take this tower, and meanwhile Alchemist is still farming almost as Radiance now. And SVG is not valuing these hill drop beasts enough. If you have these hill drop beasts, of course, they can use, be used for stacking, and they can use, be used for healing, and especially they can just accompany this Alchemist and provide him his own personal Crystal Maiden aura. So this little hull troll priest gives a 2.5 mana region aura, which is stronger than level 4 crystal maiden aura. Speaking of valuable creeps, this is an ogre frost mage. It gives you ice armor. Ice armor gives you 8 armor as well as slowing melee attackers by 30%. For 5 seconds, this is an enormously valuable creep, but you're just gonna let it die here. And of course here also this alpha wolf, of course, very strong creep. But you really want to have this Alpha Wolf creep and the Frost Frost Armor creep. These two are the strongest creeps in the mid and late game. If you want to know more about all the creeps and what they do, I've made a video about that, going through all the neutral creeps and explaining what they do and how they should be used. The runes are coming up, and you can see how aggressively Quincy Crew contest them. So he is going for the runes, but he gets skanked by three people, he dies. But here we see Abaddon, also trying for this rune, uses his uh, prototype immediately to be able to grab the rune. And they are able to get 4 runes here. Sure, they lost some mail, sure they're gonna lose Abaddon, but these runes are enormously valuable for this alchemist. Alchemist gets 3.5 times as much from these runes. And so he's well on his way to a BKB right now. Right now, Quincy Crew are extremely strong. They have Mech on Chen finished. They have this PKB on Alchemist coming out in the Courier. And so they're going for this Roshan. And Timbersaw walks in here and just barely gets away. But for how long? Answer, not very long. And Quincy Crew are back into the Roche Pit. They have all these auras. They have this uh, Swiftness aura here. They have this uh, um, Pack Leader's aura here. They have the Mac, of course, they have this region aura, they have uh, Curse of Avernus, they have this Dominator with the aura, 
and they're close to having this flood. It's very hard to actually fight into this. And uh, we see buybacks coming out left and right. War trying to somehow contest this, but it's quite difficult. See, Mac wasn't even used yet. They still have the Ten of God. Everything is still up, but uh, the chemical rage is going to run out very soon. So they we did a little bit here, and War tried to go in this rush pit, maybe hoping to find Alchemist still in there, but they don't. So they just say, okay, we're going to take Russian for ourselves. We also have this PA with Desolate. We can kill Russian fast, but not fast enough. And um, this big fight breaks out, a lot of things going on. PA is sort of dying as his radiance. It's Alchemist with the BKB. Uh, up here, some is driving people back. And Quincy Green, okay, I'm gonna kill you on this Ogre Mage. This Ogre doesn't really have anything, so he's gonna die. And now Roshan is wide open. And Quincy Green, I'm gonna take it very easily. And here's another reason why Chen and Alchemist are so strong. The thing about Chen is that he enables your course uh, well in the early game. Um, and his creeps are very strong early on, but then they kind of fall off. After like 20-25 minutes, there's just so much AoE stuff running around in fights that your creeps, if you, as soon as you commit them, they just die instantly. But with Alchemist, he has such a fast timing. Alchemist, it's... Uh, 19 minutes and Alchemist is already close to his uh, Assault Curas after Radiance and BKB. And so he comes on so early that at this stage of the game, these creeps are still kind of relevant with, even with the right clicks. And they see Trigran now because they're very strong now, they have all these auras. And very importantly, he doesn't commit all these creeps, just has one creep up here. And um, the rest of the creeps staying back here, of course, using the Whirlwind. He's running the aura, running the aura here. There's another aura. As well as, of course, the shockwave that can be used uh, to do some neat damage. You got the shockwave, or does it? No. Nope. There you have the shockwave, but doesn't really hit anything. Um, and now they retreat. Why do they retreat? First of all, PKB is running out, and this is running out. Uh, they use the timing, they got this uh, tower, and now they're retreating. You don't want to stay too long here. And there we have it, 20 minutes and 30 seconds. Phase boots, soul ring, radiance, BKB, and AC. This is not the fastest alchemist timing ever, but it's pretty fast. And here, Quincy Quirk pushing high ground once again. They have this alchemist, they have everything up. And so they can just siege this tower, they have uh, Lash Wars, these you know, uh, building damage, as well as this uh, Abaddon with his Curse of Avernus. And War can't really fight this right now. They don't even have PKB on this PA right now. She went for this very aggressive Deso into PKB build, but it's just not fast enough in terms of timings. She needs PKB to be able to fight here against this Lash Rock and the Radiant Spell and everything else, but it's just not fast enough. And now she has PKB, she jumps in here, but. It's already she doesn't really kill anything. They have this Chen with Mech and this ultimate. They have um, the Shadow Demon that can save people, and of course they have a Baden that can uh, save people with uh, his uh, Miscall and his Phonic Shield. And so it's very difficult for this PA to do anything in this fight. They have so many auras, so much utility, so much save, nothing really dies. And so this is going to be pretty much the end of the game. Um, this game is only 23 minutes long and it just shows you how devastating this timing can be with Alchemist and Chen, as well as of course the other heroes that fit in perfect in the strat. This Abaddon that uh, comes online quickly as does this Lishrak. So you have these two cores that can fight early on, provide space for the Alchemist and then you can get this sort of stomp at 23 minutes. So there you have it. You can win with Chen and Alchemist even if you don't play perfectly, we saw a couple of mistakes from SVG. I don't think he's a particularly experienced Chen player, but they just picked Chen for him because it was the perfect pick here. Chen Alchemist, very strong together, and um, just this game plan they had came together really beautifully. You have all these auras that you have on, on Chen and on, on Abaddon. You have these saves from from Abaddon, from, from the Shadow Demon. 
and you have these course they come online really quickly the abaddon the uh, lishrak in the middle that can fight early create space push together with chen and just allow the alchemist to farm his radiance even though they didn't do the best job of stacking alchemist still got his farm fairly early and it just hit this impossible to stop timing around 20 minutes with this three item timing from alchemist and chen is really here that can be very strong even if you don't have the perfect micro i've talked about this before in a previous video i looked, looked at a game with the kuro played at ti where he doesn't have the best micro but he still contributes a lot to his team or you can look at this video where i talk about item and skill builds for chen and in the meantime may obelisk protect you goodbye